via telephone, Senator Joe Manchin. Senator, good morning. Thanks so much for being with us today. Hey, how you doing? How's everybody in my favorite area? <laughs> We're doing well, sir. As I told you, when you're on hold, just waiting for your next motorcycle tour to come through and hoping for better weather for you this time. Well, I missed last year because I had some operations on my shoulder and knee all at the same time, but I'm in great shape now, buddy, ready to roll. Are those the uh, old football injuries, as they say? I think they come back to haunt you in age. Sometimes they creep up on you, so I had to get some things cleaned up and put back in place, and everything's great. Had a great uh, great recovery. No, I, I feel Thanks mine. Well, Absolutely good to have you here. So let's let's get into it. Uh, you, you were on CBS uh, News Sunday morning's program. They were asking about running for the presidency. There was a big Wall Street Journal article on it yeah. as well. Let's tackle the biggest one first. What do you say? Well, the bottom line is I said, I'll make a decision by the end of the year. There's no hurry, no uh, rush on that, Rob. Everybody keeps pushing you and pushing you. Let me just tell you, with the problems we have in front of us, we're facing a a debt ceiling. We're facing a critical financial situation in our country with a debt of $31.4 trillion and growing rapidly. Uh, and nobody wants to talk about that. They just want to basically go at odds and blame each other. I'm working on that. Uh, energy policy that makes our country uh, secured and independent. That means we have to have more fossil and we have to use our fossil cleaner than anywhere in the world as we invest in the new technologies for the future. We're not getting, you know, they're, they're fighting back and forth on doing what is right. So when you look at all the challenges, geopolitical, and you talk about the border, it's horrible. It's absolutely deplorable what's going on there. And we have to have an energy policy. We've got people not going back to work. We have 10 million jobs we haven't. And they want me to talk about politics so they can just beat the living crap out of people back and forth. And I says, I'm not in a hurry. I've got until the filing date of January the 15th. I'll make a decision by the end of the year. And we'll see where it goes from there. Matt Miller. You mentioned you're you're not you know ready to take anything off the table or put anything on the table, but clearly it means you're sitting at the table. What has you at the table? Why is it that you say this might be the time to make this decision and and run for the highest office in the land? Well, I'm not, the only thing about it is flattering. It's flattering that people would even suggest that they have confidence and faith that you might be able to you know to perform at that level and lead at that level. And I'm just very thankful for that and very flattered by all of that. But the bottom line is, is the country separated. We are a divided nation right now and getting more divided, and you can't continue that way. So how do you bring it together? I've always been in the middle, a centrist. I think I've been in the middle all my life, over 40 years in public service. But, you know, the Republicans aren't always wrong. Democrats aren't always right and vice versa. But basically, when you say, well, anything the R's or the D's want, and I'm on the other side, they must be wrong, so I'm against it. I don't subscribe to that, never have. I look at the best ideas, and I think people are looking for that common sense approach. It doesn't get as people as fired up as the people on the far right and the far left, but we're forcing people to take positions, which is absolutely unattainable. We're forcing people to say, okay, what side are you on? Well, then they push you clear to the right or clear to the left. There's nobody in the middle saying, I'm, I'm for the American side. That's the side you should be on. And if you have an idea, being a Republican, that's great. Let's see if that works in and makes it better, or vice versa with Democrats. But I just have a hard time, and I think people have seen where I've been, so you just, there's chatter. But the bottom line is, uh, I've been at this for quite some time. I'm not in a hurry to make a decision because there's so much work to be done. And right now, we've got more attention and more investments coming to West Virginia than ever before. And... Uh, you know, give you a perfect example, the Inflation Reduction Act that we did. Got a lot of criticism from my Republican friends, but when they looked at it, I said, that's an energy security bill that you all have worked on with me for over five years. It produces more energy, more gas, oil, and coal to reduce our prices. We brought down the price of uh, insulin at $35. We basically capped 2000 out of pocket for Medicare seniors. We did a lot of good things in that bill, but the bottom line is, if, if people that are saying, well, I'm not sure about that, why is all the European Union upset about the bill? Because all their investors are looking at making investments in the United States now. We've never had this much activity, so I feel very good about that. Matt Harvey. So anyway, go ahead. Go ahead, Senator Manchin. Finish. No, no, I'm just saying there's just a lot of good things, but there's so much work to be done. We seem like we're in a, in a never-ending cycle of politics. We just had an election in 2020. As soon as that election was over, the next day, the pundits and the people that make their living on, on I don't want to say this, guys, on talk shows that... Uh, we know who we are. <laughs> don't take, I know, but the bottom line is, it's, it's, just, it's just the red meat that keeps feeding and feeding and feeding. And it's not good for our country because there's too much division. 
there's too much misinformation out there that's not factual or actual. And people get, okay, well, I've seen it here. It used to be, think about this, it used to be that when people would say crazy things, they might have crazy ideas and crazy uh, positions, but there was very few people that would basically uh, codify that. Now, with all the different platforms, all the social medias, all the different talk shows, all the different cable sh shows, you can find someone that will agree with your crazy ideas, and someone will take it as the gospel. And we get more divided and divided. You know, and I'm just concerned about, you know, our country becoming more divided to the point to where uh, it's serious. And it's right now we're on the cusp of that. It's called the United States, not the divided states. So that's yeah. what I'm fighting for. We have all these Twitter bots, good, yeah. Twitter bots being released out there now that uh, make you get into a conversation about something that's not even started by a real person, Matt Harvey. So, Senator Manchin, oh. as a prosecuting yes. attorney, uh, a, a recent issue caught my eye was the D.C. Mm -hmm. Council. Um, you've indicated they enacted some some laws yeah. on sit or on reform, criminal justice reform. You've indicated mm -hmm. that you would be willing to uh, join the Republicans and vote those down. Sure. Well, first of all. The, the CRA, as you understand it, basically is a statement. It's a political statement. And if it makes so much common sense, which it does, people don't. I mean, the crime, the concern of crime around the country is, 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 a, is, a, is a level that I haven't seen in many, many years. And people are very much justifiably concerned about that. So anytime a, uh, a council or a community or a state wants to change that and, and, and reduce it, and don't 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 basically explain why they're doing it, and then you have your own mayor of of D.C. who opposed making those changes for allowing uh, serious criminals to have a reduced sentence or basically kind of walk free, and uh, for us to sit here and say oh, that's okay, they, they let them do what they want to do. No, this is the federal, the national capital, and the national uh, capital is in D.C. And the city around uh, this national capital is the District of Columbia. And we're all a part of this thing. And if they're going to basically uh, condone crime and we don't say anything. So when they asked me, I didn't think twice. I said, absolutely, I'll support the CRA that renounces what they did. I was the first Democrat to do it, I guess. And then all of a sudden, others, and then the president came last week and said he uh, would, uh, he would sign the CRA. Well, that changed the whole complexion, okay, because he knows crime serious, too, and they better change, basically, of how we, how we uh, govern ourselves and how we basically uh, protect the citizens all over this country. You mentioned the president then jumping on board and signing that and how that made a difference. Uh, as you consider your views and, and what you have stood for and running mm -hmm. for the presidency, how much does that view of cooperation really have to come from the top that, that, that you know, senators and, and the House of Representatives members, you know, recognize that, that, that they need to cooperate better because it's coming from the presidency as opposed to the, the bitter divide that you've been talking about? Well, I, first of all, I never look for the direction from a party, whether it be the president or any leadership of any party, Democrat or Republican. I've always said if I can go home and explain it, I can vote for it. I had no problem of voting for that before I ever knew what anybody was doing. Because as far as I guess people were concerned, I thought all the Democrats would support uh, not voting for the CRA. I guess 30 some, you know, they already voted over on the House side, uh, but I, I never thought twice about it. So to look and get a signal, well, is, is the president, if he's in the same party that I may be or that you may be or whatever, or they won't give me a signal what I can do, I don't have to answer. I don't work for the president. I mean, in the democracy that we have, I work for the people of West Virginia, so i got to go home and explain it. It made no sense at all for me to say, oh, well, uh, yeah, they should be able to allow felons to have reduced sentences and basically walk the streets. That doesn't make sense to West Virginia. Doesn't make sense in the country either. So I, I don't let that guide me at all. And the other thing is, is that, you know, when you can agree respectfully, I don't have to call someone stupid or crazy or insane because they believe different than I do. I just says we have a difference of opinion. I respectfully disagree. I disagree with this administration's energy policy. They're having a hard time understanding that we have to be energy independent to be energy secured. And if you want to remain the superpower of the world, you better be energy secured and not depend on your energy to come from foreign supply chains or basically countries that don't have the same values. 
And when you look at China, you look at Russia, you look at Iran, and uh, and you start looking at these countries that basically have no values whatsoever, North Korea and them, they don't wish us well. They wish us harm. And they wish us not to succeed and not to be the superpower of the world and leading the free world. And I think that's the most critical thing that we have. And that's why the debt of our nation is so critical. You can't carry $31.4 trillion. That's $94,000 per person. In, in America, that's $94,000 that each one of you and me and all of us are carrying a responsibility. This is a republic. This is our government. And our government is not in control of its finances. And if we do nothing, let me give you this figure. Right now, it's $94,000 I mean, $94, per person. It's this is just the interest on the $31 trillion of debt a year is going to $600 billion. Now, we defend our country by spending $850 billion with our military and all we do. Okay? If we do nothing by 2050, the CBO, the Congressional Budget Office, says that our debt would be about $130 trillion. Think about that, $130 trillion of debt. Our, our interest payment on that debt would be $5 trillion a year. There's no way that we will be a superpower. There's no way that we can continue to function any type in a democracy to where anyone has confidence in our, in our financial status. And there's no way that we will maintain the uh, reserve currency of the world being the U.S. dollar. It just doesn't happen. You can't carry that much debt. That would be like you. We've had 21 years. I want to give you another. <laughs> these are awful, but these are all factual. 21 years in a row of spending more money than we took in on our government. 21 years. Now think about that. You as an individual, your radio station here, any business you might know of, if they had year after year of deficit spending, how long do you think it would be before the banks would say, hey, enough's enough, I'm not giving you any more credit, I'm not going to borrow your bad risk, you're upside down? Think about that. What would you do basically if your credit card bills came in every, year, every month that was greater and all you could do is pay the interest? and you were having a hard time just paying the interest, keeping afloat. These are the things we're dealing with, and they don't want to take it serious. So, yeah, I'm on top of that one. <laughs> Senator Joe Manchin, our guest here on the program, and I know you've got to get going to a meeting soon. So uh, quickly from you, Senator, and, and that is ultimately nobody really wants to address these problems in Washington, D.C. You've got a lot of issues there, Medicare, Social Security, sure. the national debt, but you can't get adults into a room to talk about this because they're afraid that the first one who speaks is going to become the victim of an ad campaign, marginalizing their party for bringing it up, pushing grandma off the cliff in the wheelchair, that whole uh, scenario there. So how do you get together and solve these issues? Well, Rob, first of all, I went over as soon as... Uh uh, as, as soon as Kevin McCarthy became speaker, I went over. I was the first one over in his office, and I sat down, and I said, Kevin, how can I help you? I said, we've got to decide what we want to do and what we can accomplish in two years. In a, a divided Congress, we can do nothing. We can stop each other, both sides, and just don't agree, or we can find a pathway for it. I said, first of all, take Social Security and Medicare off the table. Just take it off the table. We've had it for almost 100 years, Okay. But what we haven't talked about in the last 10 years, how do we incur so much debt so quickly? How do we incur and basically change our spending from $3.5 trillion just 10 years ago to over $6.2 trillion now? We're taking in about four, nine, or $5 billion, or $5 trillion, I'm sorry. Why can't we just say, okay, let's see what happened. How did we happen to basically in increase so rapidly our mandatory spending, things that we have to do every year. How do we get so many obligations that it's mandatory? What did we do in order to keep from finding into a financial crisis when we had COVID? And now that COVID's over and we have a vaccine that works and people still aren't going back to work and we're still basically giving so much support, can we go back to normal? Can't we look at that first before you scare the bejesus out of people that you're going to take their, their checks away from them? And can't we realize this? This is the thing you all have to realize. If we sit back because we're scared to do anything because of our political positioning, thinking it will hurt us if we even talk about it, if we do nothing by 2033, that's 10 years, Social Security, we have been told by CBO, Congressional Budget Office, that there will be a 23% cut. So get, look, listen to it this way. If my mother or grandmother or my aunt's receiving $1,000 a month from Social Security 
they'll start receiving $770 and not a darn thing we can do about it because we've done nothing, because we've got more going out than coming in. That's what you're facing by doing nothing. That's what you face by protecting your political, your political proudness or your political position. And that's what you do, basically, and you're guilty of not doing your job. So we've got to protect and save Social Security. That's a must. We have to make sure we get our finances in order, and that's, that's something that we've got to do. Senator Mitch, let me tell you, there's a couple of good things happen. Yeah. We, uh, we directed last year this in spending $750,000 to restore the Apollo Theater. $650,000 for a professional development program at Shepherd University, and $640,000 to design a new indoor small arms range at the West Virginia National Guard facility. Those were things that were directed last year that we were able to get in, and everyone calls that pork barrel. They say, well, that's, uh, that's uh, just uh, spending that, uh, that, uh, that we are able as, uh, as legislators to direct to our area. The only thing I've said, money is going to be directed in order to assist governments and communities, and I'd rather us doing it myself, whether it be Shelley, all of us working together, than having the federal bureaucrats do it where they don't know anything about who we are or what our needs are. And we're proud to make sure that, you know, people, we ask people that, hey, we're in the, pres- we're in the process right now, what we call the CDS, which is Congressionally Directed Spending Request, for them to give us from nonprofits and communities what is the highest need they have that they need some assistance and help and we'll see if we can help and that's you know then you basically put it up so the whole world can see and it's transparent that you're basically directing money that these areas need to help to improve the quality of life so we'll continue to work on that but let's keep in touch okay thank you appreciate your time this morning thank you all take care guys have a great day what you're doing bye-bye 